Hey everybody and welcome. So this month I really want to focus on the hips in the golf swing. They're such an important piece of how we're able to move and swing and create and transfer energy efficiently. But unfortunately for most of us, our hips are locked up and they can't function the way that we need them to. So in the majority of athletes that I see, we present ourselves with what's known as lower cross syndrome. So rather than having a neutral posture, what happens is due to typically tight hip flexors, the pelvis will tilt anteriorly, putting the back into extension, which causes the back to fire up to stabilize our torso since our glutes can no longer do that and since our abs have turned off. So this whole thing has a downstream effect of, boy, I'm gonna be in this bad posture, I'm not gonna be able to rotate properly, and I'm going to put a shearing force on my lower back, and we don't want any of that. So what I wanna talk about today are a few things that we can do to re-neutralize the pelvis, and then we'll talk about how that relates to the golf swing. Now, what we're looking for in the golf swing to start is something known as pelvic tilt. So if you watch me from the side and I pretend like I'm about to hit, say, a seven iron, I'll fold my arms across, put my hands on my shoulders, and if you watch my lower back, we're looking for the ability to arch and then round or flatten. But think of this, if your hip flexors have been tight and your glutes and core muscles have been turned off, well, it makes sense that we're unable to control those muscles because they've been turned off for a while. So by the end of this, when the hips have reset, these should turn back on and we should see a smoother motion through them. So the first one is pelvic tilt. Now, after pelvic tilt, and we're able to move through those ranges, what I want to be able to do is hinge from the hip or bend down as if I'm going to touch my toes. Okay, and this is a very important one, not just in golf, but in life as well. Now, when it comes to golf, think about this. We don't play golf standing up here, we have to play bent over. So to have a proper hip hinge while maintaining a neutral spine will allow us to turn. And that takes us to our third thing, which is the turn itself. So once we have the pelvis neutral and we're able to hinge from the hips, we then want to be able to rotate the hips without influencing the upper body or having disassociation. So we neutralize the hips, we bend from the waist, and now we start to be able to influence the hips without affecting the upper body. Next, once the hips have started to turn, we want the individual legs within the pelvis to be able to turn, to internally and externally rotate. Because in the golf swing, as a right-handed golfer, my trail leg my right leg will be internally rotated on my backswing, while my lead leg is externally rotated. Now on the downswing, I'll do the opposite. My right leg now externally rotates and extends, while my left leg is now internally rotated. Now the last piece of all this is glute activation. Again, like we said with the cord, if this has been turned off for a while, it's going to be weak. Same thing happens to the glutes, okay? The core and the glutes are supposed to hold our, thor our thorax up. But if this hip is anteriorly tilted, this turns off, this turns off, and instead these turn on. So that's where the crossed syndrome comes in. You can see it kind of makes an X. So today we'll talk about some dynamic movements you can do to warm yourself up to get that pelvis reset. And then we'll also have individual stretches for each of those five criteria that we just talked about. All right, so to get this process started, I'd like to start by getting some movement into the lumbar spine or getting the pelvis to go through anterior and posterior tilt. And one of the most effective ways to do this is to start with no load on the body, i.e. we're gonna lay down on our back. Now, once we're on our back, what I want you to try to do, there's probably going to be a natural curvature of your back down on the lower side, kind of think of underneath your belly button. So think of 
like there's a little snake trying to crawl underneath that tunnel in your back and you want to go ahead and squish it. And when you see I do that, my hips do tilt posteriorly up. Now, they're not leaving the ground, but I do get that range. So I'm going to posterior tilt, anterior tilt, squish the snake, and let him go. And we move through this range just a few times just to get moving again, arch and flat. After, let's say, about five to ten good controlled movements there, we can then flip over onto our back. No, I'm sorry. Flip over onto our hands and knees so that our back is up and do something similar where we can now let gravity assist us and we can arch and then round. Arch and then round. And again, nice and controlled. It's not about speed. It's about trying to have good form and trying to push into some new ranges of motion. I'm here, here take a breath. And then move into the next position. Take a breath. And work through these ranges. All right, so once we've gotten our pelvis starting to tilt anteriorly and posteriorly, it's time to get the hips hinging. I'm going to take out my driver. It's going to go on my back. My arms are going to just gently rest onto it. Now, keeping my feet roughly underneath my hips, what I'm going to do is screw my feet into the ground. What I mean by that is this. Push your big toes into the floor and pretend like you're standing on a piece of paper and we're going to try to rip that paper apart. But this is really strong paper, so it won't rip. But what happens is when you push your toes in and you screw your feet in, we create good tension or torque through the lower body. You're going to feel it wind up and become a lot more secure and stable. Well, while we hold that position, what we can do is keeping our knees soft, push our hips back and lower our body and then come back up. And this is known as a good morning. Then we push ourselves down and back up. And if you watch it from the side, what you'll see is I'm not doing this. I'm not just bending forward and having the weight go onto my toes. I'm screwing my feet and then pushing my hips back. And so when I'm coming down, I can still move my toes around because all the weight's through my heels and I'm pushing back, feeling a good stretch through the posterior. So we're doing just about 10 or so really good repetitions of these good mornings. If you feel like 10 wasn't quite enough, go ahead do 15 or 20. Now once we've accomplished this, now we want to start the rotation portion. Okay, So we've done some pelvic tilt to neutralize the spine. We've done some good mornings to get the pelvis hinging. Now let's get some rotation. So using our driver again, we're going to hold it out for balance. And what I'll do is put one foot behind my knee. Now I'm going to try to keep my foot as flat as possible. I'm going to try to keep my chest nice and square. Using the club for balance, I can then turn side to side. And again, I'm trying to stay nice and square. The tendency is going to be my foot wants to come off and wobble around and my chest is going to want to open. I'd rather you see just a little bit of motion with good form than a lot of motion where our form is no good. So we're doing again 10 to 20 of these per leg and we just switch sides to do the other. Great, now we've neutralized the spine, we've got it hinging, we've got the pelvis rotating, now it's time to get the individual legs moving within the pelvis. Okay, so what I'll have you do is take one leg, I'll use my left leg as an example, I'm going to stabilize my body again, trying to keep nice and square, bring my knee up, grab and pull, then we're going to step off to the side, keeping my right leg straight, sitting down into a squat, and then I'm going to windshield wiper. If you notice my right foot is windshield wiper, then back up, knee up, back down, Squat, 
windshield wiper. Doing five to 10 of these per side. If you find that the windshield wiper is restricted, that's okay. Don't push yourself beyond any position that you can't get into. What we would do instead is get into this squat, in this side, kind of side lunge, and take your foot and just try to gently push it through the floor, but don't use your hands. Okay, so I'm taking my foot and trying to push it down, and that's gonna feel uh, nice and kind of active through the inside of that leg. And if we do this every day, then over time, the tension's gonna come off and we'll start to introduce that rotation. So that's exactly what the windshield wiper's doing, is we're internally and externally rotating in a position we're trying to improve, which is very similar to the bottom of a squat, interior, internal, external. Great, now, the last thing we wanna do is activate our glutes, get them to turn on. How do you know if they are turned on? Well, if you stand up nice and tall, can you squeeze them? Most of us can. Now, here's the next question. Can you stand tall, hinge from the waist, and still squeeze your glutes? Chances are, as soon as you do that, you won't be able to squeeze them anymore. It's something known as reciprocal inhibition, where when one muscle group is active, the opposite muscle group has to turn off. The example is, if I do a bicep curl, I contract my bicep, it moves my hand closer to my shoulder, but I can only do that because the opposite muscle group, the triceps, turns off. Okay, now how do we use this? So, if these hips are tight, these will turn off. So if we're standing nice and tall, we might be able to have glute activation, but boy, as soon as we bend down to get into a golf position, if these have historically been tight, these will no longer fire. So we stretch these, we strengthen these. How we're going to strengthen these is by getting down into a squat and going to step out to the side and over, step out to the side and over. And we're going to repeat this 10 times. Okay, left, right is one. We're gonna follow that up with lunges. But the way I'm doing a lunge is my back leg stays not straight, but I'm not going onto the ground like this. It's, it's trying to drive that heel back into the ground as I go down, getting a nice stretch through the hip flexor. So we get to kill two birds with one stone. Let's strengthen the glutes through the lunge and let's stretch out the hip flexors by keeping that back leg straight. So again, 10 of these per side. By the time we're done, our body is primed and ready to be in a good neutral posture so that we can now make good golf swings. And when we go to see our instructor, they're like, oh man, you're moving great today. Awesome, let's talk about this next step. Awesome. Give this warm-up a try. Please let me know how it goes. I would love to hear your feedback.